Ladies and gentlemen, it's my absolute honor to be here tonight to introduce one of our very best warrant officer, Nick Lavery. He's a special operator in whom Wild Bill Donovan would immediately recognize the calculating recklessness and disciplined daring he saw in his generation of warriors. On behalf of our 4,000 Army Special Operations Warriors deployed today, thank you all for your stalwart support of our men and women, and especially of our cherished Gold Star families. You truly make a difference to all of them. Thank you. <laughs> Simply put, Warrant Officer Nick Lavery is a warrior's warrior. Nick selflessly and repeatedly risked his life for our nation, for his comrades in arms, and most importantly, he accomplished what our nation needed him to do every time he left our shores. Nick is a hero in the truest sense, and I'm incredibly humbled and proud that you're honoring him here tonight. Thank you to the OSS Society for bestowing this recognition to Nick, and having Nick's family here is truly special. Thank you to Mike and Tony for celebrating this with us here tonight. It's great to spend time with you all. Nick's chosen profession requires an immersion into some of the nation's most difficult challenges, often in demanding, complex, and especially uncertain environments. To answer the nation's call, we seek men and women who have the tenacity to achieve the impossible and the resiliency to do it again and again. Nick Lavery's story is truly exemplar of that. 2012 was just another year of dangerous living for Nick. In September, he took shrapnel to his back during a village clearing operation in Afghanistan. In November, he was shot in the face while rescuing his detachment commander from a burning vehicle in a complex ambush. But each time, he refused to be evacuated out of the country for his wounds, insisting that he return to his detachment, which he did. This is typical Nick. In 2013, things got tougher. On March 11th, he found himself under withering machine gun fire during an insider attack. Nick, being the incredible, selfless, and especially brave Green Beret he is, rushed out to save an American infantryman caught in the open during the ambush. In doing so, Nick was shot five times. Nick's significant wounds ultimately resulted in the amputation of his right leg above the knee. As you can imagine, Nick was in a tough spot physically, and he had a long and demanding recovery in front of him. But his grit and his raw determination kept him going, and again, he insisted on returning to his detachment, despite being told he'd have a hard time walking down a grocery store aisle on his best day. Over time, he regained his superhuman strength, and in this really, I'm not kidding, he is in fact that strong for an average-sized human being. He requested team assignment. Leading from the front as usual, Nick demanded that he earn his spot. He prepared for the operational readiness test, an incredibly rigorous series of aerobic and anaerobic physical requirements which replicate the challenges of combat. Nick passed, and he was the first above the knee amputee to do so. He returned to the 3rd Special Forces Group, first as the lead instructor for their Special Operations Combative Program where legend has it that he greatly increased the lethality of Green Berets while frankly terrifying anyone who had to fight him. And Nick, once fully healed, quickly got back to a team and that same incredible determination led him back to Afghanistan, becoming again the first Special Forces soldier to return to combat as an above the knee amputee. After two additional combat deployments on a team, Nick's warrior mindset and desire for continued selfless service led him to commission as a Special Forces Warrant Officer, and he's still on the line in the fifth group making a difference. The key to the success of the OSS was their great talent. It was the people who served. Since then, nothing has changed. Our people make us the force we are, generating options for the nation regardless of the hard problem. Nick is indeed a very special, and he remains one of our most inspiring examples. His refusal to quit in the face of adversity, his gallantry, his outstanding leadership, his professionalism, and his personal courage are the standards our warriors strive to attain. Nick would make General Donovan as proud as we are of him. 
the men and women of special operations like Nick Lavery are in demanding places serving on the forward edge of freedom, whether in Afghanistan, in Syria, or abroad, addressing other threats to our national security. Our soldiers are present, they're capable, and they're representing American values around the world each and every day. I assure you, men and women like Nick are in places all over where we need them to be. They will continue to contribute to our nation's credible deterrence, and when called upon, they're gonna fight and win as part of the joint force alongside our allies and our partners. When the time comes, our men and women will prevail in competition or in war through daring determination, precise lethality, and agile creativity, just like Nick. These are the hallmarks of service and special operations, exemplified tonight by the actions and the integrity of Nick Lavery. Now, we don't have a cool guy drink, but we got warriors like Nick Lavery. Go Army. Please help me welcome to the podium Green Beret Warrant Officer Nick Lavery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's an honor to be here. General Baudet, sir, thank you for the kind words and introduction. Um, to be presented this award from you, sir, is really just the icing on the cake. The general and I have shared uh, but a handful of personal interactions, but it doesn't take any more than that to recognize the type of man that he is. So I just want to take this opportunity, sir, uh, for whatever it's worth coming from one of the thousands of grunts within your command, <laughs> to thank you for the example that you set as a leader. It is greatly appreciated and it does not go unnoticed. A couple months ago, I was informed that I was being nominated for the Peter Ortiz Award. Although the name was faintly familiar, I knew nothing of the award itself, and I gave it a little thought. My ODA was in the middle of a robust training cycle. We were preparing for PMT down at Fort Bliss, and my focus was on the mission. Upon notification that I was, in fact, this year's recipient, I did a little research. What I learned, to put it bluntly, is Colonel Peter Ortiz was the ultimate badass. The most decorated member of the OSS, one of its most astound operators. Ortiz's exploits are of legendary status. Two of his more spectacular acts include the theft of 10 Gestapo vehicles from a military garage he then used to rescue down airmen, and forcing a group of German officers at gunpoint to drink toast to the President of the United States. <laughs> and the Marine Corps. <laughs> whom, depending on who tells the story, may or may not have lived to tell the tale themselves. Like I said, the ultimate badass. Much has changed over the last 75 years. For one, I am not certain forcing enemy officers to drink while dual wielding a pair of Colt 1911s 
would be considered appropriate this day and age. <laughs> I am certain, however, that I, for one, would have a difficult time passing if the opportunity were to prevent itself. <laughs> the advancements within the technological and cyber domains alone make some tactics and techniques used even just a decade ago seem archaic. Understandably so, the average citizen today correlates war fighting with things like drones, laser-guided bombs, and enormous bases overseas. What remains unnoticed to most are the small, versatile, unique entities within the soft enterprise, which at this very moment are operating around the globe. This minuscule demographic of our nation's military comprised of elite professionals is widely considered the most influential force the world has ever known. Personnel decisively operating beneath the threshold of observation, praise, and recognition, whose lineage is traced back to men like William Donovan, Aaron Bank, and Peter Ortiz. The OSS is our genesis. An organization which understood the need for operators possessing both ruthless savagery and superior intellect. Men who could articulately brief a foreign dignitary in the morning and win a bar fight after pounding a fifth of whiskey later that same night. <laughs> to say I am proud to be part of this lineage would be a dramatic understatement. It is truly an honor to serve within this formation. One with a standard of distinction set forth by our founders and maintained by our leaders, which I, much, which I much, must rise to each and every day. The expectation, the demand for results simply does not allow complacency. And as if protecting our legacy and professionalism wasn't reason enough, it is those to my left and right that truly fuel the relentless pursuit of excellence. And since as far as I am concerned, my name belongs nowhere near that of Colonel Ortiz. This award is a representation of them. The quiet professionals I have had the privilege to work alongside of. The executive gunslingers who have allowed me to remain within the ranks and whose support has provided the opportunity for my continued service to this great nation. I am humbled to accept this on their behalf. Thank you once again, Charles, and to the members of this society. It is an honor. Victory of Valhalla, three five or die, de oppresso libera.